Here is an informal definition for nanotechnology from the late Richard Smalley, who was a professor at Rice University and one of the discoverers of fullerenes, also called buckyballs. Nanotechnology is the art and science of building stuff that does stuff at the nanometer scale. This definition gets to the main point of nanotechnology, that it uses the unique properties of matter at the nanometer scale for useful purposes. An interesting aspect of this definition is that it asserts that nanotechnology requires technical skill, the art of nanotechnology, to go along with understanding of basic and applied sciences. When we talk about nanotechnology, we talk about dimensions much smaller than those we are familiar with. The concept of orders of magnitude is relevant when we consider these dimensions. Orders of magnitude are written as powers of 10, and orders of magnitude differences between dimensions can also be written as powers of 10. Thus, an object that is 10 times bigger than another object is 10 to the first power, or one order of magnitude, larger. Likewise, an object that is 100 times bigger is 10 to the second power, or two orders of magnitude, larger. Looking at some other specific examples, the number 0.001 can be written as 10 to the minus third power. Similarly, 0.1 can be written as 10 to the minus first power, and 0.1 is two orders of magnitude greater than 0.001 because 10 to the minus first power divided by 10 to the minus third power is 10 to the second power. 1 is equal to 10 to the 0 power, so it is one order of magnitude greater than 0.1. 10 to the 0 power divided by 10 to the minus first power is equal to 10 to the first power. And 1 is three orders of magnitude greater than 0.001. In turn, 10 is equal to 10 to the first power, so it's one order of magnitude greater than 1 and four orders of magnitude greater than 0.001. Our last example is 1,000, which is 10 to the third power, so it is two orders of magnitude greater than 10, and six orders of magnitude greater than 0.001. Orders of magnitude are important in nanotechnology and the health of products that incorporate nanotechnology because we are talking about dimensions that vary by many powers of 10. When we talk about dimensions that do not differ by an exact power of 10, we can round to the nearest order of magnitude. For instance, if the ratio between two numbers, one divided by the other, is 2.3 times 10 to the fourth power, we say they differ by approximately four orders of magnitude. Quantities with a ratio of 7.9 times 10 to the seventh power differ by about eight orders of magnitude. Another way to look at orders of magnitude is using a website called Scale of the Universe. This site allows us to look at objects at different orders of magnitude relative to one meter, which is the approximate size of human bodies as well as beach balls and giant earthworms. If we go up one order of magnitude as indicated by the number in the lower right corner, we're at a scale of 10 meters, which is the scale of elephants, giraffes, saguaro cacti, and T-Rexes. Going up two more orders of magnitude to the scale of 10 to the third meters or one kilometer, we are at the scale of the largest buildings. Going up another three orders of magnitude to 10 to the six meters or 1,000 kilometers, we are at the scale of states and countries and moons and dwarf planets. With an additional three orders of magnitude, we are at the scale of the sun. Another three orders of magnitude puts us at the scale of the largest red giant stars. At 13 orders of magnitude larger than the human scale, we are encompassing our entire solar system including the Kuiper Belt. From here we can go up many more orders of magnitude until we reach the scale of the observable universe which is 27 orders of magnitude larger than the human scale. If we return to the human scale, we can reduce our scale by many orders of magnitude. When we go down one order of magnitude from the human scale to the 10 centimeter scale, we're at the scale of hummingbirds, chicken eggs, and matchsticks. 
going down two more orders of magnitude to the millimeter scale puts us in the range of ants, sand grains, and the largest bacteria. Red blood cells are roughly five orders of magnitude smaller than the human scale. Reducing our scale another order of magnitude to the micrometer scale, we see that we are at the scale of clay particles, the largest viruses, and the wavelength of visible light. DNA is roughly eight orders of magnitude smaller than humans. Another order of magnitude puts us at the nanometer scale where we see large molecules, the wavelengths of x-rays, and objects created by nanotechnology. If we go smaller and smaller, we get to the scale of protons and neutrons at 15 orders of magnitude smaller than the human scale. Because nanotechnology produces stuff at the nanometer scale, this stuff may interact with parts of the human body, organs, cells, DNA, differently than other things that are small to humans, but because they are at the micrometer or millimeter scale, are many orders of magnitude larger than the stuff created by nanotechnology. We know that one micrometer is one times 10 to the minus sixth meter, and that one nanometer is one times 10 to the minus ninth meter. So there are six orders of magnitude difference between one micrometer and one meter, and nine orders of magnitude difference between one nanometer and one meter. This means that there are three orders of magnitude difference between one nanometer and one micrometer. To put these differences in perspective in one more way, let's imagine that the Empire State Building, which is 1,454 feet tall to its tip, is only 100 micrometers tall. Objects roughly 100 micrometers in size are about the largest objects that can remain airborne long enough to be inhaled into a person's respiratory system. If the Empire State Building is 100 micrometers tall, the Great Pyramid at Giza would be 31 micrometers tall. A tennis court, like Center Court at Wimbledon, would be 5.4 micrometers long. An adult male giraffe would be roughly 1.2 micrometers tall. If the Empire State Building were 100 micrometers tall, LeBron James would be 0.46 micrometer, or 460 nanometers tall. R2-D2 would be 250 nanometers tall. An official FIFA soccer ball would have a diameter of 50 nanometers. A can of Diet Dew, my personal favorite, would be 15 nanometers in diameter at its widest. Finally, an M&M would be 2.3 nanometers in diameter if the Empire State Building were 100 micrometers tall. You can imagine that if someone were to throw a normal-sized M&M at you, it might sting. If it were thrown at you hard enough, it could injure your eye. If your mouth were open when the M&M was thrown, it could get stuck in your windpipe. A child could stick an M&M up his nose. You could eat too many M&Ms in a sitting and make yourself sick, or too many over your lifetime and make yourself fat. These are all potential health effects from exposure to M&Ms. If someone were to throw the real Empire State Building at you, it would do more than sting. You would certainly injure yourself if you tried to eat the Empire State Building, or stick it up your nose. The health effects of exposure to an M&M and the Empire State Building differ mostly due to their orders of magnitude size difference. Therefore, you can imagine that objects that are on the micrometer scale and the nanometer scale may cause different health effects in humans because of their size differences. This is especially the case if they are inhaled.